Osiris is the son of Nut, goddess of the sky, and Geb, god of the earth. He has two brothers, Seth and Horus the Elder, and two sisters, Isis and Nephthys. Osiris first started out as the god of vegetation. When his father Geb decided to retire, Osiris succeeded him and ascended the throne of Egypt. Back then, the country was ruled not by human beings, but by gods. Osiris ruled over Egypt with great wisdom, together with his sister Isis, to whom he was married. Okay, marrying your own sister sounds terribly awkward and awful these days, but it happened a lot in Osiris' family. His parents, Geb and Nut, were also siblings, and the same goes for his grandparents, Shu and Tefnut. So, as was the family tradition, his brother Seth married her sister Nephthys. Osiris was a fair and good god who was well loved by everyone, but Seth was secretly jealous of him. Seth did a good job of hiding his true feelings because he actually hated Osiris and wanted to be king instead. One day, Seth held a huge party in his palace. Of course, he had a plan in mind to get rid of his brother. While everyone was having fun, Seth asked for a moment of silence and got his servants to bring an enormous coffin made of fine wood into the reception hall. Then he announced that he would give away a coffin to whoever could fit perfectly inside. Uh, doesn't it sound kind of weird and creepy to give a coffin as a gift? Well, Seth's guests didn't feel that way and were pushing one another aside to get into it. Somehow, nobody was of the right size. The truth was that Seth had the coffin specially made to Osiris' measurements. Since Osiris was particularly tall, all the guests were too small for the coffin. When Seth asked his brother to give the coffin a try, Osiris accepted, laughing. But the moment Osiris was inside, Seth's partners slammed the cover over him and tied up the coffin tightly with thick rope. Poor Osiris, he did not manage to break free and suffocated to death. Here's something else that might seem strange to you, a god who dies. Egyptian deities are actually almost immortal, but not really, since they are vulnerable. They stay alive as long as no one tries to kill them. Seth then ordered his servants to get rid of the coffin, which they did by dumping it in the Nile. But instead of sinking, the coffin floated and drifted down the river towards the sea. When Isis learned that her husband was dead, she refused to abandon herself to tears. She was the most powerful goddess, and nobody's magic could match hers. She was sure that she knew how to bring her husband back to life. She then left in search of a coffin. For several months she roamed, and after a few adventures, she managed to bring the coffin back. But Seth stole the body again, and this time he did something absolutely horrific. He chopped up Osiris' corpse into many pieces and ordered his servants to scatter them all over Egypt. Isis, who would not let Villain's brother win, went back again to look for the scattered parts and finally managed to revive Osiris, but in the land of the dead. Osiris became the king of his land, but the world he ruled over was much more cheerful than the Greek and Roman versions of hell, because it was the mirror of life on earth. When ancient Egyptians died, they appeared before Osiris in the Hall of Judgment, where they would see 42 judges and a huge scale, the scale of a goddess Ma'at, who I will tell you more about in another episode. In this hall, a recently dead had to prove to Osiris that they were good people during their time on earth so that he would let them enter his kingdom. But 
but I didn't tell you the whole story earlier. In fact, Isis never did find Osiris' penis, which was eaten by a fish. And according to legend, she found her husband's head in Abydos, a city in the south of the country. From the earliest days of its history, Abydos became an important city. The very first kings of Egypt were buried in its royal cemetery. So that tells you how important it was. Osiris is easy to recognize thanks to two details. He always has mummy form appearance, meaning that he was shaped like a mummy and he wears the crown of Upper Egypt, which showed that the king ruled the southern half of the country. His crown is often surrounded by two ostrich feathers. Some artists depict him with green or black skin. Green is a reminder that he was the god of vegetation. So, like every plant, he came back to life after his time on Earth. Green is also the color of the cadavers, as for black, it's the color of a bitumen that mummies were coated with to protect them from necrophagous insects which eat dead flesh. There you go, now you know the most important things about Osiris.